At long last, Favor Union has released a TMR joystick, and I did get around to ordering a few of them. I'll put the link in the description, but who knows how long this AliExpress store will have them. I paid about $2.30 each for them, so I would expect in small lots you will be looking at 2 to $3 a piece for them, and I think that is a pretty reasonable price. There are plenty of TMR joysticks to choose from, and they are all quite good from what I have seen. But if you have a controller with Favor Union joysticks in it, your only options for contactless sensors were to replace the entire joystick or replace the potentiometers with Favor Union Hall Effect sensors. Now it will be possible to replace just the potentiometers with Favor Union TMR sensors, as they are still using the same joystick frame they've been using for years, and it's a very good joystick frame. The sensor shape is essentially the same as the Favor Union Hall sensor. This sensor has an M printed on the PCB, and that looks to be the way to tell them apart. It's the standard Favor Union mounting, and just like Favor Union Hall Effect sensors, the magnet assembly is clipped to the sensor housing. The magnet here is the largest I've seen in any of the TMR sensors. That doesn't mean it is any stronger of a magnet, but Favor Union did use a stronger magnet in their Hall Effect sensors. The pole is on the face of the magnet, that is like all the other TMR magnet assemblies I've seen, and the sensor is at the bottom near the mounting leads. To test the response time of the sensor, I will mount it in one of my test boards. Then I will position the sensor into the electromagnet. This will also give me an idea of the strength of the magnet being used. All the other TMR sensors I've tested, I've had to have the sensor away from the electromagnet, so as not to saturate the output of the sensor. Here I have the sensor position where it can receive the maximum magnetic field my little test setup can supply. Here is the scope display for the sensor response. The yellow trace is the current through the electromagnet, meaning when the yellow trace is flat across the top, the electromagnet is producing its maximum magnetic field. The green trace is the output from the TMR sensor. It is powered by 1.8 volts, the same voltage it runs off of in a DualSense controller. Here in this trace can see that even with the magnetic field at maximum, the output from the sensor is still well above zero volts. So even with the strongest magnetic field I can generate, it is not quite saturating the output amp in the sensor. This indicates that the magnets in the Favor Union sensors are more powerful than those in any other TMR sensors I've tested. I feel that has some benefits and of course some drawbacks. On the plus side, it should make it less susceptible to external magnetic fields. Also, it could have the advantage of the output having less noise. The big negative is, of course, the stronger magnet does cost more. Here, the rise time for the sensor output is as fast as my magnetic field. It takes about 3 milliseconds for the magnetic field to change direction. That would be like moving the joystick from all the way left to all the way right in 3 milliseconds. And the output of the sensor is right there with it. And here is the fall time waveform. Let me invert the sensor input so it's easier to see how it compares to the rise time. Kind of hard to tell how close it follows the magnetic field in that view. Now this waveform represents the joystick moving all the way right to all the way left, again in about 3 milliseconds. And can see rise time and fall times are very symmetrical. The output of the sensor follows right along with the magnetic field. I'm at 10 microseconds a division here to see if I can see any delay time, and I really don't. It looks like as soon as the current starts to rise in the electromagnet, the output from the sensor starts to rise. There has to be some delay, but it looks like it's buried in the switching noise, so way too fast to be noticeable. And the same applies for the high to low output for the sensor. Delay times are well under 10 microseconds, a very fast response. And really, all the TMR joystick sensors I've tested have been very fast. This is the main reason I don't see any use in buying a Hall Effect joystick anymore. The Hall sensors just can't compare to the speed of the TMR sensors. Here's the inside of the sensor. The TMR IC is at the bottom near the leads. Looks like it is marked XLF on the top line and BF on the bottom. PCB has screenings for C1 and C2, though I don't see any parts. Maybe they're on the bottom side of the board. The front of the sensor. Favor Union logo at the top. Again, this looks like the same design as the Hall Effect sensor, but it does have the white band with an M printed in it. 
The Hall Effect sensor has no printing on it if I remember correctly. Let me get the green plastic removed and see what all is on the board. Well, the only thing on the PCB is the TMR sensor I see. No caps at all, and it's only a single-sided PCB, so a very simple board. I'll put some light on the IC so the markings are more viewable. It wouldn't surprise me if the magnet is the most expensive single part of this joystick. With this lighting, you can just make out the copper traces for the two capacitors. The solder mask hasn't been cleared for them to be mounted, though. Seems like they planned to include capacitors when designing the board, but later decided they weren't needed. Here I'm going to test the power draw of these sensors at 1.8 volts. It's a little over 200 microamps at the center position, and again, that is right in line with all the other TMR sensors I've tested. It does vary as the joystick is moved, and that too is like the other TMR sensors. Just for a quick comparison, here is an OEM ALPS potentiometer, right at 850 microamps. And here is Favor Union's Hall Effect sensor. It's very close to 1 milliamp. TMR looks to be superior in every aspect. This is where Favor Union releasing a TMR joystick is going to be so nice. Here is a, a BDM-010 mainboard with Favor Union potentiometer joysticks on it. So instead of having to remove the entire joystick, only the potentiometers have to be removed. And that can save a lot of work if you don't have the proper desoldering equipment to remove the entire joystick. And the great thing is the joystick frame is the same as it has been for years. Here are the new TMR sensors mounted on the old Favor Union potentiometer frames. I'll speed through the calibration. and then back to the Gamepad Tester website to see how the controller performs. Centering is good. Most of the time, seems to snap back within one or two counts of dead center. And now for the circularity. That looks quite good. If the joystick mechanism is not broken, there really is no need to remove the old joystick frame. By just replacing the sensors, you will have a joystick with very good circularity and performance. I do want to see if there's any real difference in using an entirely new joystick. So I'll pull the old joysticks out and put in new Favor Union TMR joysticks. First step is to calibrate the controller, and I will speed through that. For the range calibration, I do try to do the same thing every time. I go three rotations in one direction, and then three in the opposite direction, with kind of a light touch. Of course, by hand, there will never be two calibrations that will be the same. I see the calibration site has a new beta option, fine-tuned stick calibration. I won't touch that here, as I want to see what I get with the standard calibration. But it is nice to see added features. I'll save the calibration and back to the Gamepad Tester website to see how it turned out. Centering is basically the same. Again, I haven't seen any change in Favor Union's joystick frames from the original potentiometer ones. Circularity is maybe 1% lower than with the older joystick frames for this run. If I reran the calibration, it could easily change by a percent or two. The point here is, if your joystick is working and feeling good, I don't see any need to replace the entire joystick. Just replacing the potentiometers will yield very good results. And I can't stress enough that if you don't have much experience soldering and unsoldering electronic parts, there is a large difficulty gap between just replacing the potentiometers and replacing the entire joystick. Now that the edge controller can be calibrated with a mod to the stick modules, I will start testing joystick fit for the edge modules. The sensor is not overly large, but the raised area here at the bottom is probably going to cause a fitment problem. There is very little space for the sensor between the joystick and the plastic frame piece that holds the FN button in place. The edge stick modules I've seen all came with ALF joystick, so this will require replacing the entire joystick. I will put a link in the description to the video about how to mod the stick modules so they can be calibrated. 
As I expected, the sensor is hitting the plastic frame, but there is an easy fix. I'm using the soldering iron here to melt away the plastic corners of the sensor from about the holes in the PCB down. It's the outside edge of the sensor that hits the plastic frame, and by removing these corners, it should allow it to fit in the stick module. And now it will fit. Of course, some of the plastic frame that holds the FN button could be removed as well, but I would do that as a last resort. By taking these corners off, I don't think you will have any problem installing these in an edge stick module. First, I will calibrate the controller. It pops up the message saying that the stick module has to be modified for the calibration to be saved. I will speed through the calibration. The left stick is the new Favor Union TMR. The right stick is a Ghoulie Kit TMR. I will save the calibration and then go to the Gamepad Tester website to see how things look. Centering on the Favor Union is probably a bit better than the Ghoulie Kit as the Favor Union has a bit more tension. Circularity for the Favor Union is excellent, a bit better than the Ghoulie Kit. I still prefer the feel of the Ghoulie Kit, but if you are looking for as close to that OEM feel as you can find, then the Favor Union should be what you are looking for as many DualSense controllers came with Favor Union joysticks in them. There was only one reason I would recommend someone use a Hall Effect joystick sensor, and that one case was, if you have Favor Union joysticks, and you need to replace the potentiometers, replacing them with the Favor Union Hall sensor was a good option. With the availability of these Favor Union TMR joysticks, there is now no reason to ever buy a Hall Effect joystick for the DualSense controllers. TMR pulls less power, and quite a bit less compared to some of the Hall sensors. TMR has less noise in the output, and that's less noise with outputting capacitors on the output. Accordingly, TMR has a lot faster response time. Are these Favor Union TMR better than the other TMR joysticks? I would say no. Not better, not worse. Signal output from all the TMR joysticks I've tested has been great. I don't think using them it would be possible to tell any difference. But each joystick does have its own mechanical feel, and that is where there is a difference between them. And it's really going to be down to a personal choice of what one prefers. I think these Favor Union joysticks will probably be the closest match to the Alps feel, but there are now plenty of choices, and that is a good thing. Thank you for watching.